What's up guys, I'm Ben and this is Kame Trick. It's a channel where we enjoy grassroots drifting and car projects, and I also share a little bit of my life with you. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, then you'll know that I was in Texas recently. I picked up some In-N-Out Burger, which was delicious because we don't have it up here, and I was also down there for another thing. Some of you guys already know what it is. I was picking up some car parts, but it wasn't parts for this car. No, it was parts for my virtual car. That's right. After several, several years of being out of the scene, I have picked up a new driving rig for sim driving. And I'm very excited about it because my old rig was a gear-driven unit and it was acceptable for grip, but absolute trash for drifting. It wouldn't self-steer or anything like that. And I found a stellar deal on some great parts. Those will be coming very soon, but first, I need some sort of a cockpit to mount them to because I'm not going to just stick them to the desk and use an office chair. I'm going to be doing a budget build out of 2x4. Very simple, a couple of basic tools, a circular saw, uh, a speed square, and a ruler. And we're gonna see if I can figure out how to make a super cheap cockpit for sim drifting. Check it out. First up, I do have to get my saw blade ready. Hopefully I don't obliterate my fingers. One thing that I think is super cool about this uh, old circular saw, this was my grandfather's. My father's father bought this when he was probably a young or middle-aged man and he actually used it to do some home construction projects on the house that they lived in and then he gave it to my dad and my dad used it on smaller construction projects. He built a deck with it at one of the old houses we used to live in and some other things like that. And finally it's come to me where it's had a very easy life. This will actually be my first time using this particular tool but I'm really just stoked on how rad it is. This is an old craftsman model. It's all steel like the body. Everything is made out of metal except maybe this handle here. And it's pretty heavy, but it's just a workhorse and it's pretty cool that something this old is still going and going strong. hours later and here we are. Now this is still a work in progress, it's not finished yet, but I'll take you around and we can look at where I have gotten so far. I planned to film all of this, but it proved to be uh, pretty difficult. I'm not very good at fabricating, I don't have a whole lot of experience with it. But basically we've got this uh, very nice Sparco Sprint. It was going to go in the drift car, however uh, I just don't feel like putting it in right now. I'm liking my current seat more than I expected. So what I did was I built a box here that the seat can sit on. I am actually using uh, Street Faction adjustable rails. So I have an adjustable seat in my sim rig because I figure I'll share it with friends. Then that box is inside of a bigger box here, which goes around and holds the pedals. So seats in, pedals are in. And then I today have been working on building an e-brake shelf, and next up is a little shelf for the shifter that I'm about to mount. The e-brake and shifter look a little more difficult to mount because there's no holes going all the way through like there are for the seat and for the uh, pedals. So I came up with what I think is a pretty cool way to do it, and if you're working in wood, this will help you out a lot. On the underside of your shifter and e-brake, there are these four holes, and of course these little screws came with the kit, and so if you use them, and screw them in, you can actually make yourself a template out of that. With the screws installed, we pull out our secret weapon, an ink pen, so I'm gonna shake this up. And then I'm going to paint a little circle around each of the bolts. Not much time to do this, but I'm gonna line it up and then press down firmly. 
And then that's gonna leave us four little marks exactly like what we need, check it out. Now we know exactly where we need to put our drill. And to make it even easier, our second secret weapon is gonna be this punch. So we're just gonna line up our punch right in the center of these holes. Give it two taps. And now we've got a perfect template to drill our holes. That's pretty much been the whole process from the beginning, but since it's a huge pain to actually film and I don't wanna get a bunch of wood dust in all my camera gear, I'm pretty much just showing you an abridged version. So we're going to put the shifter on and then uh, I'm gonna figure out a way to make like a level surface for the steering wheel. And uh, I may consider making a monitor stand as well since I don't have anything of the sort right now. And at least for the short term, I'm gonna use a single monitor setup because that's all I own. Uh, we'll see from there if we can go to VR, but the last time I tried VR, the only time I tried VR, um, while standing still in a game, it was great, but in driving games, it made me nauseous kind of quickly. So I don't know if I'll be able to do VR like all the cool kids. Um, I may just, I don't know. It may not work for my brain, we'll see. I'm gonna try it a few more times on some friends' rigs. Uh, and if not that, then it's gonna be ultimately a triple monitor setup. So we're gonna start with one monitor and go from there. After a couple sessions of cutting and measuring and cutting again because I'm not great at this stuff, it's done. The most cheap, adequate sim racing uh, cockpit that I can possibly design. This is a very simple setup. Uh, it's made from 2x4s which are about $3 a piece and I probably used about 5 of them uh, in part because I suck at cutting and measuring. Let's take a closer look. Here it is. And as you can see, the construction is fairly simple. I started by making a box for the seat, and then on the other end of that box, I placed the pedals. After that, I built a stand for the handbrake and followed it up with an upright for the seven speed shifter. Last but not least, I added a box at the top where I built my base for the wheel. Originally, I had intended to use just this piece to make it easier to get in and out but it was a little bit too unstable and it would move a lot. So I decided to add another upright. We've got our Maziora wheel on here and as you can see, it moves really smoothly and everything is looking great. I do have a ways to go in finishing this rig. I need to clean up all of the dust and I'll be removing all of these components while I apply some paint. We'll be applying several coats of satin black paint and then in my next video for the simulator series, I'll go over the gear that I have chosen, put it all back together, and uh, then we'll be ready to test it out. So I'm looking forward to shredding with you guys soon and banging doors. I will be on in probably about another week. Uh, I do want to take a little time to set up my rig and set up my area, and I've also got to clean out my office to make room for this stuff. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing and sharing this video with a friend who's into sim drifting. Have a good one, guys. Peace.